श्री राहुल गांधी जी थैंक यू चेयरमैन सर फॉर अलाउिंग मी टू स्पीक ऑन स्पीकर सर फॉर अलाउिंग मी टू स्पीक ऑन द प्रेजिडेंशियल एड्रेस thank you thank you thank you for allowing me to speak i felt that the presidential address should have been a strategic address a address that spoke to india about where we are and where we should be going what are the challenges we are facing what are the difficulties we are facing and what is the potential direction in which we can go unfortunately the presidential address was a long list of things that the government claims to have done but didn't really contain the deeper strategic issues that we would have liked to see also the presidential address didn't touch a couple of central challenges facing our country and that's what i would like to discuss today to me it seemed that the presidential address was a list of bureaucratic ideas instead of a strategic vision it looked to me as if it had been constructed not by a vision of leadership but by a group of bureaucrats who had simply to put something down on paper so what did the presidential address miss what did the presidential address not speak about what did the presidential address hide from the people of india i think there are three fundamental things that were not spoken about in the presidential address the first and what i consider to be the most important is the idea that there are now two indias there is now no longer one india there is there are two indias one india is for the extremely rich people for those who have immense wealth for those who have immense power for those who do not need a job for those who do not need water connections electricity connections but for those who control the heartbeat of the country and then another india another india aapke jab neta bolenge na फिर हम भी वो खड़े होंगे उस समय गरिमा होते हैं इस उस, जब आप इस गरी, एक 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 कोई भी नहीं खड़ा हुआ यहाँ इस गरिमा को इस गरिमा को मद्देनजर ये चर्चा करना चाहिए नेता सत्ता पक्ष के भी है नेता विपक्ष के भी है हमारे नेता भी बोल रहे हैं समय हमें दिया गया इस सूची में हम बोल रहे हैं अगर आप यह चाहें कि हमारे नेता को बोलने में बाधित बाधा डाले जाए तो मौका हमारे भी आएंगे आपको नेता जब यहाँ बोलने उठेंगे हम भी इस तरह की बाधा डालेंगे ये आपको समझा रहे हैं चेतावनी दे रहे हैं ऐसा नहीं हम लोग डरे हुए नहीं है हम अपना बात please, रखना please, चाहते हैं अधिकार है हमारा and and for for my friends in the uh, in the government i want to make it clear that the spirit of what i'm saying is not uh, one of criticism the spirit with which i speak is one of discomfort with the status the state of our country and the spirit with which i speak is one where i am worried 
about what is happening to the country. So you must not take it as a criticism. Take it as a citizen of the country who is concerned about what is going on. So, दो हिंदुस्तान बन रहे हैं एक अमीरों का हिंदुस्तान और दूसरा गरीबों का हिंदुस्तान और इन दो हिंदुस्तानों के बीच में खाई बढ़ती जा रही है आपने अभी देखा होगा अभी दो स्पीकर्स ने बात की मगर आपने यह नहीं कहा कि रोजगार ढूंढने के लिए उत्तर प्रदेश में बिहार में रेलवे की नौकरी के लिए वहां पे युवाओं ने क्या किया और क्या हुआ इसके बारे में आपने नहीं बोला गरीब हिंदुस्तान के पास आज रोजगार नहीं है प्रेसिडेंशियल एड्रेस में बेरोजगारी के बारे में एक शब्द नहीं था और पूरे हिंदुस्तान में आज हिंदुस्तान का युवा रोजगार ढूंढ रहा है हर स्टेट में उत्तर प्रदेश बिहार सब जगह हिंदुस्तान का युवा एक ही चीज मांग रहा है रोजगार हमें दे दो और आपकी सरकार नहीं दे पा रही आपको मैं आंकड़ा देना चाहता हूं इस पिछले साल तीन करोड़ युवा रोजगार खोए हैं आप बात करते हो रोजगार देने की 2021 में तीन करोड़ युवा रोजगार खोए हैं 50 साल से सबसे ज्यादा बेरोजगारी आज हिंदुस्तान में है आपने मेक इन इंडिया की बात की स्टार्टअप इंडिया की बात की मगर जो रोजगार हमें हमारे युवाओं को मिलना चाहिए वो नहीं मिला और जो था वो गायब हो गया और यह सच्चाई है और इस सच्चाई को आप भी पहचानते हो क्योंकि आपने भी अपने भाषणों में रोजगार के बारे में कुछ नहीं कहा कितना रोजगार पैदा किया गया है किस प्रकार किया गया है उसके बारे में आपने नहीं बोला और आप बोल भी नहीं पाएंगे क्योंकि अगर आप बोलेंगे तो हिंदुस्तान का युवा आपके और देख के कहेगा कि ये मजाक कर रहे हैं तो ये स्थिति पैदा कैसे हुई ये दो हिंदुस्तान पैदा कैसे हुए रोजगार रोजगार स्मॉल और मीडियम इंडस्ट्री और जो हमारा इनफॉर्मल सेक्टर है उधर बनता है लाखों करोड़ लाखों करोड़ रुपया आपने उनसे छीनकर हिंदुस्तान के सबसे बड़े अरबपतियों को दिलवा दिया आपने पिछले सात साल में अनऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर और स्मॉल और मीडियम इंडस्ट्री पर एक के बाद एक एक के बाद एक आक्रमण किया है साथ साथ की कर रहा हूं मैं साठ की भी करूंगा मैं मैं अपने भाषण में अंत में साठ साल की बात करूंगा आपको खुश करने के लिए आप ठहर जाइए मगर असंगठित जो सेक्टर है उस पर आपने आक्रमण किया कैसे किया नोटबंदी गलत जीएसटी गलत जीएसटी और कोरोना के समय जो सपोर्ट उनको देना था आपने नहीं दिया नतीजा क्या हुआ नतीजा यह हुआ कि आज 84 परसेंट हिंदुस्तान के लोगों की आमदनी घटी है और वो तेजी से 
गरीबी की ओर बढ़ रहे हैं यूपीए की सरकार ने आपने पूछा साठ साल की बात आपने कही यूपीए की सरकार ने तेईस करोड़ लोगों को गरीबी से निकाला था दस साल में हमारा आंकड़ा नहीं है हमारा आंकड़ा नहीं है हमारा आंकड़ा नहीं है आप हंसिए हमारा आंकड़ा नहीं है यह सच्चा आंकड़ा है 27 करोड़ लोगों को 27 करोड़ लोगों को हमने गरीबी से निकाला था और 23 करोड़ लोगों को आपने गरीबी में वापस डाल दिया सेम, सेम, सेम। और हो क्या रहा है फॉर्मल सेक्टर में मनोपलीज बन रही है किसी भी आप सेक्टर में देखिए और सबसे दो मनोपलिस्ट के बारे में थोड़ा सा बोलूंगा उसको वो कोरोना के समय अलग अलग वेरिएंट्स आते हैं आते हैं ना डेल्टा ओमिक्रॉन वो डबल ए वेरिएंट है और वो पूरा का पूरा हिंदुस्तान के कि जो अर्थव्यवस्था है उसके अंदर फैल रहा है आपने बात उठाई तो मैं उसके बारे में पहले बोल देता हूं एक व्यक्ति को नाम नहीं लूंगा एक व्यक्ति को हिंदुस्तान के सब पोर्ट्स ब्रांड हिंदुस्तान के सब पोर्ट्स हिंदुस्तान के सब एयरपोर्ट पावर ट्रांसमिशन माइनिंग ग्रीन एनर्जी गैस डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एडिबल ऑयल जो भी हिंदुस्तान में होता है उधर अदानी जी दिखाई देते हैं और दूसरी साइड अंबानी जी पेट्रोकेमिकल्स टेलीकॉम रिटेल ई कॉमर्स में मनोपलियां तो पूरा का पूरा धन जो है चुने हुए लोगों के हाथ में जा रहा है और आपने जो असंगठित सेंट्रल सेक्टर को खत्म किया देखिए अगर आप इनफॉर्मल सेक्टर को खत्म कर देते और मैन्युफैक्चरिंग जॉब्स आप क्रिएट कर देते तो फिर इतनी प्रॉब्लम नहीं आती फिर दो हिंदुस्तान नहीं बनते मगर आपने क्या किया आपने असंगठित सेक्टर को खत्म कर दिया नोटबंदी जीएसटी कोरोना सारे के सारे जो स्मॉल और मीडियम बिजनेस है उनको आपने बंद कर दिया बोलने दीजिए बोलने दीजिए सारे के सारे जो स्मॉल एंड मीडियम इंडस्ट्री है आपने उसको खत्म कर दिया नष्ट कर दिया अगर आप उनकी मदद करते और अगर आप उनकी मदद करते उनको सपोर्ट देते तो फिर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सेक्टर तैयार हो सकता था मगर जो लोग आपका मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सेक्टर बना सकते थे उनकी आपने उनको आपने खत्म कर दिया तो आज आज हिंदुस्तान में आप मेड इन इंडिया मेड इन इंडिया मेड इन इंडिया की बात करते रहते हो मेड इन इंडिया हो ही नहीं सकता आज बात खत्म हो गई है क्योंकि मेड इन इंडिया वाले हैं कौन मेड इन इंडिया वाले स्मॉल मीडियम वाले हैं उनको आपने खत्म कर दिया मेड इन इंडिया वाले कौन है असंगठित लोग हैं उनको आपने खत्म कर दिया हटा दिया परे कर दिया मेड इन इंडिया नहीं होने वाला है अरे भाई मेड इन इंडिया मेड इन इंडिया करने के लिए मेड इन इंडिया करने के लिए स्मॉल और मीडियम इंडस्ट्री को ही बड़ा करना पड़ेगा बिना स्मॉल और मीडियम इंडस्ट्री को सपोर्ट दिए मेड इन इंडिया हो ही नहीं सकता है और अगर आप पूछते हैं तो मैं आपको बताता हूं मैन्युफैक्चरिंग जॉब्स की अगर हम बात करें तो मेरे पास आंकड़ा है यहां पे 
पिछले पांच साल में मैन्युफैक्चरिंग जॉब्स 46 परसेंट कम हुए हैं 46 परसेंट ड्रॉप इन मैन्युफैक्चरिंग जॉब्स इन इंडिया वाई बिकॉज यू हैव डिस्ट्रॉयड ऑन ऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर वाई बिकॉज यू हैव डिस्ट्रॉयड एम एस दैट इज वाई यू आर फोकसिंग कंप्लीटली on 5 or 10 people i don't have a problem with that i don't have a problem with big industry focus on them but please realize please realize that they cannot produce jobs for you small and medium industry is the only people who can produce jobs for you that is the reality aur ho kya raha hai do hindustan ban rahe aap yahan pe bhashan dete rehte ho naya hindustan new india make in india और कौन से नारे हैं स्टार्टअप स्टार्टअप इंडिया आप ये बोलते रहते हो बोलते रहते हो बोलते रहते हो और देश में बेरोजगारी फैलती जा रही है और आप ये मत सोचिए आप ये मत सोचिए कि ये जो गरीब हिंदुस्तान है जिसको आप बना रहे हैं ये मत सोचिए कि ये चुप बैठा रहेगा ये मत सोचिए कि ये चुप बैठा रहेगा ये चुप नहीं बैठा रहेगा इस हिंदुस्तान को सब कुछ दिख रहा है इस हिंदुस्तान को दिख रहा है कि आज सुनिए इस हिंदुस्तान इन लोगों को दिख रहा है कि आज ये आंकड़ा आप सुनिए ये आपकी सरकार की देन है ये आंकड़ा अच्छी तरह सुनिए इस गरीब हिंदुस्तान को दिख रहा है कि आज हिंदुस्तान के सौ सबसे अमीर लोगों के पास हिंदुस्तान के पचपन करोड़ लोगों से ज्यादा जायदाद है बात समझिए दस लोगों के पास चालीस परसेंट हिंदुस्तान से ज्यादा धन है दस लोगों के पास ये कैसे हुआ ये आपने किया ये नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने किया और तो मैं आपको एक सुझाव देता हूं प्रधानमंत्री जी को आपको सुझाव देता हूं ये जो दो आप हिंदुस्तान आप बना रहे हैं इन दो हिंदुस्तानों को जोड़ना का काम जोड़ने का काम जल्दी से शुरू कीजिए स्मॉल एंड मीडियम इंडस्ट्रीज की मदद करना शुरू कीजिए जो हमारे बेरोजगार युवाएं हैं उनकी मदद कीजिए और ये जो आप पूरा का पूरा धन इन्हीं पांच दस लोगों को दे रहे हो क्योंकि ये आपकी मार्केटिंग करते हैं आपको टीवी व्हाट्सएप फेसबुक पर लगाते हैं ये काम आप बंद कीजिए नहीं तो देश का नुकसान होगा आपका नहीं देश का नुकसान होगा तो पहला मेरा सुझाव यह है नंबर टू और नंबर थ्री भी है अभी आएगा वो और वो जो आपने साठ साल की बात कही थी वो नंबर थ्री में आएगा नाउ आई आई लाइक टू स्पीक देर आर आप तो Now, 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 there are two competing visions of this country, which is frankly the main difference between us and them. If you read the Constitution of India, you will find, and many of my colleagues who have not read it should look at it. You will find. that india is described as a union of states yeah. india is not described as a nation it is described as a union yeah. of states yes, yes, yes. what does that mean that means my brother from tamil nadu has to have to others has to have the same right as my brother from maharashtra as my sister from maharashtra as my brother from uttar pradesh as my brother from bihar as my sister from manipur nagaland mizoram that's what it means what it means jammu kashmir of course jammu kashmir nagaland of course andaman nicobar of course that is lakshadweep now what is the difference you have to understand this this is a serious matter i would like to have your view on it and i would like this parliament house to start serious discussions instead of the type of discussions that we having that is why it is serious it is serious and i would like a serious response right what i heard frankly 
what I heard in the first address today was not serious. What I heard Mr. Devedi say was not serious. It did not behoove this house. It was not at the standard that this house should be used to. It is not at the standard that India should watch. Now, let me come back to the discussion. Let me come back to the discussion, Speaker, sir. There are two visions. There are, there are, there are two visions of this country. One vision that it is a union of states, meaning it is a negotiation, meaning it is a conversation, yes. meaning I go to my brother in Tamil Nadu and I say, what do you want? And he says, this is what I want. And then he asks me, what do you want? And I say, this is what I want. It is a partnership. It is not a kingdom. Yeah. Remember that. Yeah. You will never, you will never ever in your entire life rule over the people of Tamil Nadu. Yeah. It cannot be done. You will never ever in your life rule over these other people. Please, please listen to what I'm saying. Now, no, you, you, no matter, no matter what fantasies, no matter what fantasies you might have, you will never ever rule over the people of the states of India. It has never been done in 3,000 years. Never, ever. The only way India has been ruled. And you can look at any empire you want. You can look at Ashoka the Great. You can look at the Mauryas. You can look at the Guptas. You can look at anyone you want. It has always been ruled by conversation and negotiation. Now, what is the problem? The problem is you people are confused. The problem is you people think that these languages, these cultures, these histories, you think that you, you think that you can suppress them. You have no idea of history. You have no idea what you are dealing with. Because the people of Tamil Nadu have inside their heart the idea of Tamil Nadu, the idea of the Tamil language, and then also the idea of India. Do not be confused. The people of Kerala have the idea of, I am not, I am telling you the truth. The people of the people of Kerala, the people of Kerala have a culture. I'm now a member of Parliament of Kerala. I understand it slightly better. They have a culture. They have a dignity. They have a history. The people, like like the gentleman said, the people of Rajasthan have a culture, have a history, have a tradition, have a language. They have a way of life. This is like a bouquet of flowers. Yeah. This is our strength. Yeah. I learn from the people of Tamil Nadu. I learn from the people of Rajasthan. I learn even from you. Every day I learn from you. I do. It's not funny. It's not funny. I learn from you. Right? It's not funny. Anyway, there is another vision. A vision that India can be ruled by a stick from the center. You people have no idea of history. Because every time it has been attempted, that stick has been broken and smashed. Now, now what is happening as a result of your flawed vision of the country? Two Indias are of course being created. Two Indias are of course being created. 
स्पीकर सर अध्यक्ष महोदय so what is happening what is happening as a result of this flawed vision two indias two india us pe bhi bolta hu us pe bhi bol deta hu main us pe bhi bol deta hu main emergency pe bhi bol deta hu koi problem nahi hai main bolne se nahi darta hu aap unka main main darta nahi main bolne se aap anyway so there are there are two visions one is a union of states union of languages union of cultures a, a bouquet of beautiful flowers that can challenge any power in the world no power in the world has ever been able to challenge this bouquet of flowers now there is another vision a centralizing vision the vision of a king the idea of a king which the which the congress removed in 1947 we smashed that idea of a king now that idea of a king has come back that there is a king a shahin shah a ruler of rulers a master of masters now what is happening now now speaker sir now speaker sir what is happening aap beech mein mat boliye now now speaker ha sabko now speaker sir what is happening as a result of this flawed vision what is happening is that the instruments of the conversation between our states the instruments of the conversation between our peoples what we call the institutions of our country are being attacked and captured by one idea so for example today the idea the idea of tamil nadu the idea of tamil nadu is excluded from indian institutions they can keep coming to you again and again and again and again and saying need 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 and you will say no get out of here right they do not have a voice in your framework the farmers of punjab can stand up and say we do not agree with these three laws they do not have a voice in your framework only the king has the voice the farmers can sit for one year they can sit for one year outside in corona they can die doesn't matter the king does not agree you do not listen to anybody and even all of you my dear brothers and sisters in the bjp i i saw my i saw my dalit colleague speak today paswan ji i saw him Yes. He knows the history of the Dalits. He knows who has oppressed the Dalits for three thousand years, and he is speaking with a hesitancy. He is speaking without. I am proud of him. I am proud of this gentleman. He has spoken to me what is in his heart. I am proud of this man, but he is in the wrong party. Don't worry, घबराइए मत. नहीं बीच में नहीं, बीच में नहीं. तो बीच में थोड़ी बोलेंगे. बाद में. बाद. No. Look, look, speaker sir, speaker sir, speaker sir. I am a democratic person. I will allow him to speak. ये सुनो एक मिनट ये आप किसी को इजाजत नहीं दे सकते ये अधिकार मेरा है प्लीज बैठ जाइए मैं आप वो इजाजत दे सकते हैं क्या आसन को वो इजाजत देने का अधिकार नहीं है ये 
ये अधिकार आसन का है किसको इजाजत देनी है किसको इजाजत दे मानी राहुल गांधी प्लीज बैठ जाइए मैं दूंगा आपको मौका मैं आपको मौका दूंगा सो स्पीकर साहब सो स्पीकर साहब मान्य सदस्य प्लीज बैठिए मैं आपको मौका दूंगा बोलते रहे आप स्पीकर सर सो दिस कंफ्यूज आइडियोलॉजी दिस कंफ्यूज अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द नेशन ऑफ इंडिया इज प्लेइंग हैवक विद दिस कंट्री एंड आई गिव यू एग्जाम्पल्स the judiciary the election commission pegasus these are all instruments of destroying the voice of the union of states when you apply pegasus on a indian politician when the prime minister personally goes to israel and authorizes the use of pegasus in india he is attacking the people of tamil nadu yeah. he is attacking the people of assam yeah. he is attacking the people of kerala he is attacking the people of bengal ek minute point of order point of order rule 521 352 1 speaker sir 352 1 kahta hai ki a member while speaking shall not refer to any matter of fact on which a judicial decision is pending supreme court mein ye pending hai sir sir और यदि इनको सुप्रीम कोर्ट पर विश्वास है कोर्ट पर विश्वास है तो ये अपना फोन जो है जमा करें पहले ये शामिल हो सर ये पहले उसके इंक्वायरी में शामिल हो क्योंकि इनका नाम भी पेगासस में है सो कॉल्ड ये जो कह रहे हैं इसीलिए ये पेगासस का नाम ले ले सकते सर ये कॉपरेट नहीं कर नाउ सो वॉट इज है a particular organization has captured the institutional framework of the country and is attacking the voice of the different states of this country and my fear is that you will get a reaction from that voice my fear is that this attack that you are carrying out on the institutional framework of this country is going to get a response from the union of states and you are fiddling i understand this you might not appreciate it but my great grandfather spent 15 years in jail building this thing my grandmother was shot 32 times and my father was blown into bits so i understand a little bit about what this country is my blood has been sacrificed not by me by my great grandfather by my grandmother by my father for this country so i understand what it is and you are fiddling with something very very dangerous and i am advising you stop because if you do not stop you will create a problem you have already started creating the problem the problem is already started in the northeast the problem is already started in tamil nadu you are not it's not you're not visible it's not visible to you right now jammu kashmir which i will speak about which is my third point now what you are fiddling with is extremely dangerous and it demonstrates a complete lack of understanding of history please this evening go back and look at all the empires that have ever ruled india look at them carefully you will find that every single one of them is a union of states there's not a single empire there was a reason ashok used to go and put his pillars everywhere because it was a union of states where ashok the great king respected everybody 
You are disrespecting everybody. Disrespect no. me, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. But you cannot disrespect the people of this country. Right, now final. And I think one of the more important parts of my speech. Actually, I want to say one other thing, which, which I demand an apology from the Home Minister. And this represents again the idea of a union of states versus the idea of a king. Now, a few days ago, some political leader, I'm not going to name, came to me from Manipur. And he was very agitated. I spoke to him, I said, why are you agitated, my brother? And he says, Rahul ji, I have never felt as insulted as I have a few days ago. I said, why? He said, Rahul ji, a delegation of Manipuris, political leaders, senior leaders went to see the Home Minister. Outside his house, we were told to take off our shoes. And when we went inside his room, we found that the Home Minister was wearing his chappal. <laughs> what does this mean? What exactly does this mean? Why is it that in the Home Minister's house, the Home Minister can wear chappals, but a delegation of Manipuri politicians cannot. What does this mean? Why? Why? No. It reflects... No. No. I'm not saying that. I'll show you a photo, Speaker Sir. I'll show you a photo. I said to him, I said to him, you are wrong. He said, Rahul Ji, I'll show you a photo. And he gave me a photo. This is not the way to deal with the people of India. Anyway. Anyway. Now, let me come to my final and I think most important point. Go ahead. We, we are sitting Sanskriti संस्कृति ये होती है कि वो भी जूते उतारे और आप भी संस्कृति ये नहीं होती कि वो जूते उतारे आप नहीं ये पता नहीं कौन सी संस्कृति आपकी anyway let me finish let me finish very very ridiculous argument against the honourable Home Minister it's not and it has touched the religious sensibility it has touched the religious sensibility of all our all our people भारत की धार्मिक परंपराओं पर अटैक कर रहे और ये हम सबकी धार्मिक परंपराओं के ऊपर आघात है हमारे घर में भी यही है परिस्थिति Speaker sir, speaker sir, it reflects, it reflects, it reflects a mentality. It reflects a sense that I am bigger than you. You are nobody. I am everybody. That is why I will wear my shoes and you will not. Anyway, anyway, going back to the main point. Now, and the final most important point. My understanding is that the RSS and the BJP is playing with the foundations of our country. And they are weakening the foundations of our country. They are weakening, they are weakening the links between our people. They are weakening the links between our languages. Now, they have further weakened the country they have further weakened the country by ensuring that not a single Indian youngster can get a job. So today, unlike a decade ago, 15 years ago, India is weak. Ask yourselves, ask yourselves why you were not able to get a guest on Republic Day. 
Ask yourself that question. Don't look surprised. Ask yourself that question. What is happening is that India today is completely isolated. You, we are completely isolated and surrounded. We are surrounded in Sri Lanka, Nepal, Burma, Pakistan, Afghanistan, China, everywhere we are surrounded. And our opponents understand our position. Please let me speak because I'm saying something very serious, right? I'm saying something very serious. Let me say it. We are, we have been weakened. The conversation between our people is not taking place. Our institutions are under attack and we are completely surrounded. The Chinese have a very clear vision of what they want to do. They are very, very clear about what they want to do. And one second, please. The single biggest, you can ask anybody who understands, the single biggest strategic goal of India's foreign policy has been to keep Pakistan and China separate. This, this is fundamental for India. And what you have done, what you have done is you have brought them together. Today, do not be under any illusion. Do not underestimate the force that is standing in front of you. Do not underestimate the power that stands in front of us. Do not underestimate it. You have brought Pakistan and China together. And this is the single biggest crime that you could commit against the people of India. China has a clear vision. And I can clearly see, without any confusion in my mind, that China has a plan. China has a plan. I can see without any doubt that the Chinese, please, we are all nationalists. So let us discuss properly. I can see that China has a clear cut plan. The, the foundations of their plan have been put in place in Doklam and in Ladakh. Do not underestimate what we are facing. This, this is a very, very serious threat to the Indian nation. This is a very, very serious threat to the Indian nation. We have made, we have made huge, huge strategic mistakes in Jammu and Kashmir. We have made huge strategic mistakes in our foreign policy. And if we do not correct those mistakes, what are the mistakes I have just told you? You have brought China and Pakistan together. You have brought China and Pakistan together. You have made, you have taken the concept of two different fronts and con con converted it into one, one unified front. Yes. Yeah. And by the way, in case you haven't Rahul realized ji. it, Rahul ji. Huh? in case you haven't understood what's going on, it is very clear that the Chinese and the Pakistanis are planning. Look at the weapons that they are buying. Look at their activity. Look at, look at the way they are talking. Look at who they are speaking to. I am clearly stating in the House of Parliament that we have made a massive blunder. And we need to make sure, absolutely sure, that we can defend ourselves against the Chinese. Please remember what I am saying. Because the Chinese will act. Remember what I am saying. And remember 
that you will be responsible for anything that happens. That is why it is important that as a nation we start this conversation. It is important as a nation that you listen to what we say because we have experience, we have understanding. You might not think so, but we have people on this side who understand these things, have great understanding. Use us. Use us. I can see that some of you are understanding what I'm saying. I'm happy. I'm happy. I can see. So these are the three points I wanted to make today. The nation is now at risk. The nation is at risk. The nation is at risk from outside. From inside. The nation is at risk from inside. And that is a very dangerous place for a nation to be. And I don't like it. I'm very uncomfortable with my nation, with my beloved country standing where it is standing. Completely isolated on the outside, fighting on the inside, institutions captured, states not able to speak to each other. This worries me. It frightens me for my country. And so that is why I thought it was important that I speak today. I know, I know that many of you will just rubbish what I'm saying. I understand it. That's, that's what you've been told to do. And I'm happy to let you do it. But remember what I said. You are putting this nation, this wonderful nation and its people at huge risk. Stop. Thank you. Excellent.